Alright guys, so today we're going to be doing a sledgehammer workout in the backyard. All you need is $20 trusty sledgehammers, two if you can afford it, one we can make do. Um, and a flat bit of ground in the backyard. Now we don't need tires or anything, if you have a tire to hit, it's going to be even better. But all we need is some flat ground um, and these extreme exercises that I'm about to go through. Alright, so our first exercise is going to be lateral raises. It'll warm up these shoulders so that we don't run the risk of pulling something. So we want to hit these with higher intensity, higher reps, so that we can uh, build up the lactic acid in them. Then they're going to be able to last throughout the whole workout. So they're about you know, two and a half kilos each, not nothing too heavy. We want to be doing 20, 20 reps to start with, followed with holds for roughly about 30 seconds. So it'll look like this. If you want to make this any harder, you can definitely extend sledgehammers out. So you've got to cantilever a little bit more, put that tension on the shoulders, make it a little bit harder each time. So, hitting 20, to have your timer going for about 30 seconds. That'd be burning now. That lactic acid's good. All right, each time we push that threshold, body gets stronger and stronger. All right, so between each exercise now, we're gonna be doing a little bit of cardio work. And we call these slams. So we're gonna be working each side and front on plane in a slamming motion. So I like to call these hill hunters. As you can see in my backyard, it's going to find some hills. Saves me hiring an excavator. So we're going to flatten this out. All right. So this looks like a nice little hill. So we're going to absolutely smash the crap out of it. Right, so I'm going to start with my right side. I'm going to do 20 slams. Then we're going to get it back into another exercise. All right, make sure we work the whole core here and move the whole body as one. All right. We want to make this cardio work yet, get that heart rate up, but also the most out of our core so we get that nice tight looking core um, also making it stronger All right, so while we've well, we got our heart rate up, we want to keep it up, all right? So we're going to switch from cardio workout back to a uh, more static movement. Um, we're going to be hitting the chest here with, uh, I guess, uh, sledgehammer push-ups. We're going to incorporate a secondary muscle. So we're going to work on our rows as well, which is also going to incorporate our stability muscles in our core. So we've got win-win-win here. So pick a nice plane. Um, Unfortunately, I haven't hit enough hills down, so I'm going to be on an angle, a bit more of an incline. Who cares? Make it harder. So you just want to choke the sledgehammers around the neck, otherwise you go down too too close, you're going to be hitting the, uh, the dirt. So, nice shallow depth, so you've got more control of the body to go out, the more it's going to be putting pressure on your shoulders. So we've got 20 reps here.
got to move on to our slams again. Okay, so we're back to slams. But this time we're going to be working the front planes. We just want to be going straight up, straight down. Not hyper extending our back. We want to keep our, our core nice and tight so that we're not hurting our back. We're putting more of the control in our front zone and slamming it as hard as we can. So we're working our shoulders as well. Just 20 of those, and we'll move on to the next exercise. If you've got nice soft grass at the back, um, then you're going to be much better off because you can put your knees down on that. I've got some leftover timbers here that I was going to construct something later, but uh, most likely going to be firewood. So all I've got, unfortunately, is a towel so that my knees, my old knees, don't get hurt. Just going to place that down, place my knees on this. And we're going to be doing back pulls. So we're going to put all of our weight onto the edge of the sledgehammer here. We're going to extend ourselves down as low as we can. With as much control. Try and get your sledgehammer on a nice flat bit of ground so it doesn't feel uneven. All right, so all we're doing is pivoting the sledgehammer from here. All right, but we want to keep nice straight arms so that our back and our serratus here is doing all of the pulling and the controlling. So we're using our abs to control us down, hold us straight. And then as you can see, the serratus in the lap is gonna be pulling us back up. So we're gonna be hitting 20 of these. So you want to make sure that your knees are in a nice, nice comfortable position. You might have to play around with where the sledgehammer actually is. That might have been a little bit too far. As you can see, my knees were sliding forward. So just bring it in a little bit, reset, and make sure that every every rep counts. It's not a race, okay? A rep that uh, is 100% is going to be far better off than 100 quick, quick reps. And that's why we've got these slams. That's where the cardio is going to come in. And we're gonna be able to work out heart rate with that. Technique doesn't matter so much about that, it's about tempo. So let's get straight into our left side slams. Nice and controlled. So as if you know me, you know my background is in demolition. So I know my way around a, a, a sledgehammer. But this is also gonna be building our forearm strength. So don't let your grip strength uh, loosen. I'm gonna keep that tension on the whole body. Even strengthen the areas that are a bit faulty. Right? They're, they're the areas that are gonna make you stronger and the areas that you need to work on. All right, so now with these exercises, we're going to be focusing on the biceps. We're going to be doing curls. So the easiest place to grab your sledgehammer is around the throat. And then as you progress in strength and forearm strength, you can work your way up the sledgehammer. Keeping the forearm nice and tight. We're going to be working that forearm and the brachialis 
I think that's what it's called of the bicep head. We're gonna come up in a controlled state in front of us. It's so much stronger than being out here and come across. That's it. Use that back of the handle on the elbow as support. Come up, control it down. So that's that's probably the strongest variation. We're just gonna stick to 20 normal hammer curls. So just coming up. This is a good rest rest time for us. We still want to squeeze the muscles in our biceps. Make sure they're doing something. Halfway. Burn them arms. You want to tone them up? Right, from here, we're going to jump straight into our next exercise. They're squat um, shoulder raises. So we're going to go a little bit deeper on our sledgehammers. We're going to come down and shoulder raise at the same time. Burn them shoulders and the legs. 20 of these. Boom. He's going to work our forearms, plus our shoulders. So we're going to keep it down straight, have our, um, our non grip hand on the feet, just as support. And we're going to focus on pulling with the hand on top, rotating it over, and controlling the weight as we rotate using our forearms. All right, then we push it back over and control it back the other way. So this hand is purely doing nothing, just help. So we're going to 20 of these. And the 20 on the other arm. As you get stronger, you work your way down the end of the sledgehammer. All right, so as you get further away, the cantilever is going to be harder. Burn them. Being a smaller muscle group and a much stronger muscle group, Pain is short, but they recover so much quicker. Alright, we're going to switch it up. We get the other hand. You're going to definitely feel it up through the biceps as well considering we did a little bit of biceps before, but the all emphasis is gonna be on controlling the rotation and the thickness of our forearms, okay? We wanna make them pump up, we wanna make them, give them a reason to grow. And they're not gonna be able to do that sitting there watching Netflix. All right, guys, we're back onto the chest. This one's gonna be a super, super advanced exercise. We're going to be doing chest flies. Now, we don't want to put too much stretch on our front delts. So just focus on getting the depth of the chest if you can. And then um, as you strengthen up your shoulders, you're going to be able to stretch out further. So we want the heavy end up, up our, uh, the same end as our body to make it a little bit harder. So we've got a little bit more weight behind the, um, the pulls. Uh, so find a nice flat ground in close if you can. All right, over the top. 
So if you want a little bit more stability with your feet too, you go wider and it's going to be much easier. But if you want to smash it in your core and, and uh, don't waste your exercises, bring them in close and test it out. Depth, 20 of these. Oh, nice good stretch on the chest. So we don't want to be wasting our exercises, okay? We don't want to be wasting our days here in um, quarantine. Make the most out of every exercise, push your limits, and make your rest period shorter every time you do this. Next exercise. So we're back on the abs, okay? The one area I need to work on. And we're just gonna cross the weights so that they're nice and evenly cantilevered. And what we're doing is oblique twists. Um, or some people like to call them a uh, Russian twists. So our focus is on trying to rotate our whole body together, okay? Not just our head. We're gonna rotate that whole weight down at the side, even touch the ground with the opposite side and back down the other side. All right, so we want 40 of these, so 20 each side. Uh, let's go. We're going to be working on skull crushes this time. So, taking the emphasis away from our lats and our serratus, we're going to be putting it on our triceps. So that stretching the tricep arm with our head tucked in and then focusing on using this part of our arm to push the weight away from our body. So shortening the tricep head. So that range of movement is all we're aiming to do with the heavy weight up on the uh, our, our end. So just tucking in. a little bit further back, kick it into the ground. All right, so we're gonna tuck our arms in, all right, lengthen the tricep head, and bring ourselves back up, short. After, it may seem easy at the start, but after about 12, 15 reps, you're gonna feel the blood fill up the muscles and they're gonna be harder to contract. So trust me, these are a good one if you put all that focus into the tricep. But you wanna keep that moving, okay? We don't want rest periods between these exercises. All right, so next and final exercise is a reverse fly. We're gonna be smashing out our rear delts. Um, we wanna hit these in higher volume, so maybe even 30 reps. Um, and then we repeat this circuit again two or three times. Uh, to look like this, so bent over. If you've got the flexibility to bend over, we just want to extend our arms back up. All right, just like chicken wings. So that's the end of our workout, our circuit. So the aim of this is to build our muscles so that they can last longer. 
Okay, we don't want those powerlifting muscles that can move one specific weight at one time at one moment in our life. We want to create the muscles so that they can carry our bodies for longer, be stronger, and outlast these powerlifters.